I'm going to show you how to properly thread the Bernina 570, wind a bobbin, and put the bobbin in down below. But before I get started, let's talk about quality sewing thread. The Bernina is a high performance sewing machine. This is not the time to be skimping on thread and what you put in the machine. So if you've got old, old thread that grandma gave you, that is not the thread you're wanting. The little package that comes with the machine is a Mettler brand of thread. That is one of the greater brands. Um, that's actually what I usually choose to put on the machines. So start off with these, definitely see the difference. Also put the little pad that will kind of help the spool sit onto the spool pin. Now let's take a look at your spools. Number one, if you have a thread that has little X's on it, we call that cross wound thread. And this thread does best if it is laying down and coming off the end. And of course, if you lay it down, you need to match one of the spool caps. This is the large one. There's a medium one and a small one. Match it to the size of spool you're actually using. Next, you got to put it on all the way so the thread can't get caught in between these two places. Because if it does, then it just breaks your needle and that's not fun at all. Now, if you are using some thread that is maybe not crisscross on the spool, but it's more like a stacked thread, then you're going to actually place that on the vertical spool pin because that thread comes off the best from the as it twists or coming off from the back side. So did you see how I did that? I just pushed down and up comes your vertical spool pin. So let's just stick that down and out of the way. When we go to wind a bobbin, we'll be always using this first guide back here that is directly behind in front of that spool. We'll use it for winding a bobbin as well as our first guide when we thread the machine. So take a bobbin out and let's take a look at it. You do have the silver side and when I place this onto the bobbin winder, it is going to go silver side down. You actually cannot put it on the opposite way. So you can't get this on the machine incorrectly. So I'll just go ahead and set it there because after I do this first guide, I'm seeing that there's little dotted lines and numbers for where to take the thread for winding a bobbin. So here's what we're going to do. It's going to direct me to come around this little button uh, clockwise and it will actually crisscross over itself. Now here's the thing. If you don't get it in this little pretensioner, you can hear it clicking just a little bit. You won't get that nice tightly wound uh, thread on the bobbin. So make sure you give it a little pull and it clicks in there. Next, you know what you can do is you can see the direction of this arrow is take the thread in your hand and wrap it around the bobbin, oh, four, five, six times. If it's slippery thread, maybe a few extra. And there is a cutter right underneath this little lever. As soon as I push that over, it is going to start to wind. But if I bring the tail of the bobbin bobbin thread here underneath it and click it at the same time. It's going to cut this and start and it immediately will start winding the thread onto the bobbin. On screen here, you can actually control how fast or how slow you want it to actually fill. So it kind of comes up at kind of a medium speed and that's probably good for most of the time. If you want to stop it, you can always flip that off to the side. And when it's full, this will flip over and it is ready to take off. So let me show you that little trick. There's that little cutter underneath. So lift up your bobbin, come around the back side towards yourself and then cut the thread. And that's all we need to do. Let's continue down into our bobbin area. And by the way, I took off that sticker off the front and also peeled off the, the, the plastic wrap that was covering up this. So if you find yourself with the little stickers, just go ahead and take them off. They're there for just kind of the original shipment. Take your finger, open up the door, and you're gonna notice that this silver kind of arm here that goes side to side, push on the right side of it, and that's what brings out your bobbin case. So notice that there is a bobbin in here wound with white thread from when it was shipped from the factory. And you'll notice as we work with our newly wound bobbin, we're gonna put that silver side down into that area first and then bring the thread over to where the little groove is on the side of the bobbin case. Bring the thread down through the groove and down towards this little guide over here. So as you kind of slide it down, you're going behind the guide and then kind of up 
and underneath. And so the thread sits kind of right in between those two little areas there. And you can see that it spins counterclockwise when it's in there correctly. Next, as you remember the little kind of silver bar that we pushed on to bring the bobbin case out, we're gonna go ahead and kind of line that up side to side and then come down in here and just push the whole entire bobbin case into the machine. Now don't push right here where it pops it out because, well, then it pops it back out. Uh, but once it's in there, it will stay. And now you have this thread. There is another thread cutter right here on the side of the bobbin case door pulled down and that cuts the thread to the perfect length for you to just close the door and forget about it. And when we get our machine threaded and take our first stitch, that thread will automatically come right back up into the stitching. Let's come right back up to the top of the machine. And remember that little pretensioner we went around for our bobbin? That is only for winding a bobbin. So let's go ahead and take it out. And before I go any further, I'm gonna just have you double check that your presser foot is up. If it is down, go ahead and touch the foot up down button. That's the button right below the green button here and just touch it so it is in the up position. So when you're threading, here's a little trick for you, is just hold on to the thread behind or by the spool as you're coming down each of these grooves. By you giving it a little resistance, it is then going to be guaranteed to get into the tension area and into the places it needs to be done. So we're coming down here where it says two, coming underneath this silver arm and come in where the take up lever is. Notice there's two little black pieces kind of on either side of the take up lever. You're gonna come on the right side of the silver take up lever, but not past where the black part is. Come all the way to the back and then kind of come down the front and it will click into that small little opening and those black pieces are what keep the thread from it coming out of the take up lever while it's sewing. Next, there's two more guides, one right here at the base of the housing, and then the other one is on the left side, right at the top of the needle. So give it a little pull so it will come in and kind of be lined up with the front of the needle. Now, I'm gonna do a, the needle threader next. By lowering the presser foot, you actually get a little bit of resistance. So touch that foot down button, the foot goes down, gives you a little bit more room, and then puts a little bit of snugness on this thread for the needle threader to work. Now we'll do a needle threader video as well, but the quick version here is to come down about halfway, bring the thread around that little kind of nub at this point, come down all the way and down a little bit more until the needle threader head comes around the needle. And then you're gonna bring the thread right up into this little groove on the right side. And then as I gently let go of the needle threader, I'm letting go of the thread. Don't hold on to it over here too hard. Otherwise it can't pull it through. But look, that loop comes through immediately. So like I said, we'll do a video on the needle threader. If you have not figured it out, we're gonna give you some helpful tips over there that will be great. So just in case it's not doing it exactly the way you thought it should, I'll give you those tips there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just make sure that the machine is completely threaded correctly. I am a fan of sewing always on two layers of fabric. So I'm taking my fabric and folding it in half. Slide the fabric underneath your presser foot and just step on your foot control. So as soon as you step, the presser foot will come down that little extra noise happens on the very first stitch it takes after you've turned the machine on. That is completely normal. And then just go ahead and start to sew. If the machine is going a little slower than you expected, slide that speed all the way up to its uh, fastest speed. And then when you're done, touch the scissor button right here. It's the second one down from the green light. It will cut your thread, lift up the foot, pull your fabric out, and you have the perfect seam stitched. Now that we know that our machine is correctly threaded, we are ready to continue on. Now, if that was not a smooth function when you went to stitch and you got lots of threads or something on the back or it kind of tangled up, all you need to do is backtrack, 
re-thread the machine, maybe take your bobbin out and try that again, and let's get on the same page for your machine sewing nice and smooth. Be sure to check out all of our videos that we are doing on the Bernina 570 Quilters Edition and the Bernina 570 Embroidery videos that will help you master the embroidery side of this beautiful machine.